Vanessa, the girl on a bike, and I am about to embark on a pretty terrifying adventure. It's going to be one of the bigger ones that I have done. I have a Tiger Rally Pro from Triumph behind me, and I'm not only going on a road trip to the south of Spain, I've also got all of my stuff strapped on the back to go to Morocco and do a desert rally, Thousand Dunas. So this is one of the videos in a series of videos that I'm going to be doing across the next 15 days, living out of those bags, surviving in the desert and adventuring. And of course, throughout all of this, I'm going to be putting in some of the, the information and my impressions on this bike, how it handles. I'm going to be doing some tips on roadbook navigation, on picking bikes up in the sand, all kinds of stuff, anything in between. So if that sounds of interest, make sure you hit subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel. But right now, I am getting really warm because <laughs> I've got all my kid on, but I've got a ferry to catch. And as with all things, I'm running late. So it's time to get on the bike. Let's go. I'm on the bike, ready? Mav, hello. I forgot to tell you guys, Mav, HP2 Mav is my wingman. Look at him go, he's on a Tiger 2. He is escorting me down to southern Spain, which basically means road trip. And I'm going to wheel out the gate and we're going to hit the road. Yeehaw. Oh gosh. My panniers are very full. This is, this is going to be an interesting ride. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm drunk. I'm not drunk for the record. Um, right. Okay. You get the gate. Oh my. First time on a bike. time it's amazingly hard we made it nice pants boom we got the same pants on for the record there we go my pants his pants Produce. i like how i have to try and show you my pants but i could just say my pants are the same <laughs> okay we better check in ah! we have made it to the ferry look at those sexy beasts i'm not talking about mav I'm talking about the tiger Rawr. Time to de kit, transport mode. Very good. Start of an adventure. Again. It's been too long since the last one. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So, if you want to see the last time we were on an adventure, actually, we've done a few. We've done a few, right? Africa Twins. Twin, Enfields. Royal Enfields. That was pretty epic. They're ridiculous. Harleys. Harleys. They've all been awesome. Here's to the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're on. road tripping across Spain. Yeah. Um, starting with a lovely ferry dinner. We are, we're sailing. Living the life. <laughs> it's a cruise, right? Cruise. <laughs> 30 hours from the south of France to the north of Spain. Yeah. Less glamorous. Perhaps you should have downloaded more movies. <laughs> I think, what's 30 hours in, in movies? Well, Ten? I like to get some sleep. Ten, okay, oh, oh, he wants to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> currently chilling out in my cabin. So this is my cabin, da da da! See you on my bike kit. Mav is uh, just popped to go and get us a pack of crisps and we are gonna watch a movie. I'm gonna basically fast track the ferry experience because it's 30 hours of doing this, cuddling your thumbs. <laughs> no, we've been good, lots of chatting. Uh, we're gonna play some card games, watch a movie, just kind of slow pace of life and then we will be in Spain. So we're gonna just fast track the stuff, like And then we'll be in Spain. We are just over halfway. I think we've got about 14 hours left. Look at that sunset sea. Uh oh! <laughs> so, apparently the boat isn't rocky enough. So, <laughs> seashore, obviously. <laughs> Although Vanessa's forgotten but I weigh quite a bit more than she does, so we're about to launch her off the boat. <laughs> Sorry, Triumph, no rally for her. <laughs> Just like that, 30 hours is over. We are 
currently in the process of docking up in Spain. So we've got our bikes getting back loaded and any minute we are going to be allowed off the bike and then we're going to start our journey south across Spain towards Granada. How's my day this morning? Marvellous. <coughs> Very mild of the panic. There's always that little bit of stress, but we're all good. That was so terribly British. <laughs> <laughs> number one brief which was basically find coffee shop which is there but what that. that is a coffee shop with a view turns out when you go into a coffee shop you need the card that you left in your trouser pockets that are in the bottom of the bag at the bottom of the pannier to pay for it i'm not the only one that does that right packing panniers <laughs> coffee one of the things about traveling is the culture and the differences. So we've got a traditional Spanish tortilla. So this is potato, egg. We've gone for the ham and cheese one because we're a little bit outrageous. And it's all about trying different things when you're traveling. Mm. Mm. Onion in That's really good. Wow. Cool. What is the Tiger Rally Pro 900 from Triumph? So this is the replacement of the 800 Tiger, which has been around for a couple of years and did really, really well. But what they have done is taken the 800, given it some extra power and really upped their game. So the 900, obviously we've got an 888cc engine in there. That's knocking out about 93 brake horsepower, which means you've got plenty of power in the throttle. But the key thing that is important for me, particularly given I'm on my way to Morocco to do a desert rally, is the fact that this is the Rally Pro. And with the Rally Pro, Triumph have gone, right, what do you need to go off-road? And how can we make this bike fit that perfectly? So in a nutshell, we've got a riding mode edition in there, which is gonna give you a complete shutdown of your ABS and your traction control which is what you're gonna need if you're gonna go into really proper off-roading territory. We've got a slightly bigger ground clearance, which is obviously good for getting off-road. And then we've got some extra bash plates and stuff. Now the Rally Pro is really the top spec offering in the Tiger range from Triumph. So you've got some of the all whistles, all singing, all dancing kind of vibes. So the bottom frames, you've got the additional riding modes, you've got things like heated grips, heated saddle, all those kind of things. I'm gonna talk more about those specs a little bit later on the ride once I've got more experience with them. But the key thing for now is the fact that this is designed to give you touring, which is what I'm doing right now across Spain, but also off-road, which is what I'm gonna do when I get to Morocco. And obviously, the tires, stuff like that are gonna change before I hit Morocco, but I've got a thousand miles to do and road tires are gonna be important for that part. So far, I've done about 150 miles on this bike. So there are a couple of immediate reactions I'm gonna have. Now this video is not a spec list of the bike. There's plenty of videos online that will just talk through the actual details of this bike and you can read them on the Triumph website. This is about what is it like to actually tour, actually road trip and go off road. So initial thoughts. So the screen is the first thing and it has a one hand adjustable up and down, which means you can change how much buffer, how tall you are, get a little bit more vision if you want to see the ground off road. Super easy, no tools needed. The display is really easy to read. Now I got on this bike for the first time in the dark last night to ride to the ferry and quite easily on the journey I got to grips with the screen. There's lots of different options on the screen. So we've got distance, average speed, duration, so that's your current trip, how long you've been riding. Uh, you've got your current MPG, obviously we're stationary so we haven't got any. We've got our average. Now the 
Triumph spec says this bike is going to do 54.9, I think, miles per gallon. So actually, we're getting 53.7. We've done a mix of motorway and B road, really. So that's actually pretty, pretty good. Range, obviously, it needs to be running and uh, everything. You haven't got your fuel gauge unless the engine, the ignition's on. You've got your PSI for your tyres, which I think is an awesome little thing to have. When you have a little moment off road and you're wondering if your, your fly tyres are all right, you can quickly flick and see it. We've obviously got all of our, our revs and speeds going on at the bottom. We can change the lighting on it and the contrast. It doesn't really show so much during the day, but um, at night, you might want to not be blinded by a bright white screen. Uh, I have it on auto and that shifts as the, as the light of natural environment around you changes. You've then got different styles. So I'm in style two, you can go to style three, uh, you go to style four, this is just shifting your display and what you can see. Style one, I personally am enjoying style two, so I'm gonna leave it on that. Your revs, it's kind of strange seeing your revs as a number instead of like a, a bar, but it's a cool, cool way to do it. And that's back to the beginning. You've all got your home button, which enables you to hopefully Bluetooth and set up stuff on your bike, etc. Yeah, you get the idea. It's actually a really quite an easy to use screen. Have had a little bit of issues with the connectivity with the phone. I'm hoping that's just uh, this stuff kicking in. But at the moment, it's a little bit of frustration. I haven't managed to get the my connect to work. We'll work on it. Heated grips and heated seat. It's just so dreamy having those things, particularly when you have cruise control and the ability to boop it up one or two miles an hour without having to fully reset. You've got a reset button and a set button. And I just really like cruise control. If you're like me thinking, why the hell do you need cruise control on a motorbike? Try it. And then you'll be like I am now, not the previous Vanessa who goes, Oh, that is amazing, because when you're sat on the motorway for an hour, a few hours, or even on just beautiful twisty roads, it takes so much effort off this. Speed cameras, you don't have to worry about in the same way. You go into a, a zone, you can just set your, your speed and you're not going to accidentally go a little bit fast. Panniers and luggage are an important one for touring. Oh, I'm pretty loaded up. My roadbook navigation tower, which is going to bounce on the handlebars for the Thousand Dunas Rally, is actually in here along with my tent, my sleeping bag. I've got the official Triumph hard luggage on the back and pretty good space. They come off very easily and there are luggage racks on there. I'm probably gonna take the luggage racks off for the actual rally because it's a good couple of kilos of weight I can ditch. Um, it's a little bit weird, the key system. I think maybe that's just, you kind of need the key to close them and you can't just kind of have them unlocked well, I guess you probably could, but your knickers might go down the road. I don't know, it's probably to stop me losing my knickers by having it locked with the key. So actually, maybe that's a good thing, because no one wants to see my knickers down the road. I've strapped on a big waterproof bag on the back, loads of places to mount it on the bike, so that was actually really easy. So you can see I've got a lock of luggage. The only thing I haven't brought with me is the kitchen sink. Uh, felt like I could probably live without that in the desert. There must be water, right? I put a quad lock mount on there um, so that I can see my phone. I've got a little Moscow tank bag. I find these really handy because you can have your phone or your um, passport, sunglasses, lipstick. Mav needs his lipstick, so that's why he's got one of those. Uh, I think that's probably key items on it. How does it feel so far? 150 miles in, I'll be honest. My butt got a little bit tired last night. It's got quite a hard seat and it's comfortable as far as the riding position, but my bum got a little bit sore. So it'll be interesting to see how my, my butt seat relationship continues. But aftermarket, you can get different seats. You can easily get covers and stuff. I don't think it's like a breaking point for me. Loads of lively power, good riding modes. So yeah, 150 miles in. I probably need to stop talking and start riding or I might miss the start of this rally. And uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs>
Well, I wasn't stood next to them when you decided to throw them off the bike. This is what we're eating, people. It's um, amazing. But this is the Bentley. We're basically diluting the, the amazing snacks with the garage cheap, snacks. The garage cheap snacks so it lasts longer. 100k left of our day today, and we are heading to Segovia for the night, basically. And the bikes are feeling amazing. I cannot believe how comfortable they are for touring. The seat we've decided, you have about a two hour kind of bum comfort window and then your bum needs a kind of a little bit of a breather, which is what we're having now eating cashews and trail mix. The seat basically sucks. Yeah, the seat's not, not great. Uh, but that's a fixable problem. What was it sucking on? Mine's well, not sucking. It's not sucking in a good way. <laughs> you can end that bit out. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but I've got, like, there's, there's power, there's good windshield. I don't feel like I'm being wind buffeted, apart from the wind today has been crazy on that road. Like, you're constantly leaning and twisting because in the, it's not really mountains, it's sort of hills and bridges yeah. and, the, and trees, and the wind just seems to be coming from left and then right and then forwards and the back. And then, anyway, it keeps you. Yeah, good. You, you, you realize as, how much it is until you, like, go to shut the camera and the mirror and you take your head out of it. You suddenly realise yeah. how good the weather protection is. But obviously you're not moving around using cameras whilst riding along, oh, are yeah. you, Mav? Oh yeah, good weather protection. And also the one hand adjustment. Have you adjusted it riding along? Yeah, totally. You have? Yeah. There he is. I've just kept mine on high. Yeah, but I when guess... I was trying to get shots of you, uh... like a good camera chap that I am. Mm -hmm. Tell us, is he good? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, is I... Mav a good camera yeah, chap? no, don't. <laughs> Cameron, you're very British today. Very British. I'm a chap. We'll, we'll move to D tomorrow. Okay. Okay, right, we're gonna carry on riding. First fuel stop, coffeeed up, treat sewed up. White snow, red sky, reach up for a soul so high. Blue eyes, fake cry, beware of the fox tonight. The cold feet, a dark rain. How much stuff should you take for a 10 day trip? Um, kitchen sink, kitchen advisable, sink. but we left yeah. that at home. Um, oh. This much stuff? <laughs> this isn't even all of it. There's still stuff on motorbikes, but I'm going to the desert. So I'm Th that's your excuse. That's my excuse, yeah. Well, this is a house, this is a kitchen, this is rally kit, this is riding kit, this is the evening kit. I I'm just impressed you didn't try to blame me. <laughs> this is a really cozy lift. I'm not sure the video is gonna do it justice. Um, in the mirror? Yeah, there you go. In the mirror, you can see how tiny it is. <laughs> We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Um, at least if we get stuck in the lift, we have all of the supplies via the desert with us, right? Oh gosh, look, we're just trying to get out. Go on, you can fit. You can fit. Breathe in. Breathe in. <laughs> you should have eaten that donut. <laughs> Okay. Oh, we're out. Okay. Yep, we're out, we're out. Crashing. Ooh, that was close. We're going in. Oh, I'm gonna hit my head. We've worked out a bed. Ow, I did hit my head. This is worse than off-roading. <laughs> Found a better way to get in the lift, which involves me going on the trolley. Are oh, you coming on as well? Are we one? Close up. Uh, one. Yep, yeah, here. Oh my goodness. I can confirm the tigers are more comfortable than this. <laughs> the tigers are really comfortable, I'm sure. I'm yeah. loving that bike. There's so much power. I think because when you go on, I don't know, the Pan America or an Africa Twin where you've got like the 1200, you've also got an extra 50, 60 kilos of weight. So you drop to an 800 and you've got a little bit less power, but it's not so bad. What this do you reckon? This is a good place to do this. Okay, I'll, I'll get <laughs> off the trolley. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why won't it steer? Because there's a big let weight on it. I'm actually not being let off. Oh, I'll drop my motorbike key. Who let us loose in the urine? This is what happens. This is what happens. I'm still on the trolley and we're now in the um, foyer. I think we're going to get told off by the section. Who's all the Okay, I can't actually get off, just so anyone going, why don't you get off? Because I'm holding a helmet between my knees, so until he stops and takes the helmet, I'm a, I'm a victim of trolley abuse. <laughs> okay, there we go. Did so you hear that laugh? That was evil, okay. It, it was somebody else. Yeah. I wasn't on film, you can't okay. believe it was me. Can you remove the thing between my legs, please? <laughs> and the helmet? Oh, oh, oh. I'm free. And then I've got a motorbike key. Okay, right. So this is actually a pretty beautiful looking hotel. Nice room. This is the outside. But the town that we're staying in looks so beautiful that we're gonna get back on the bikes and go for a little poop around town and see some of the sights. Electrics that are permanently live for one of those plugs. A DIN, I think. DIN plug? But that's a great one for if you've got heated clothing. There's one up front and there's also one down the side at the back, which it means that if you're having a pillion on the back, they can have heated clothing as well, or whatever it is. The challenge, I suppose, is that it doesn't have USB. So this is a little adapter that Mav, the action man, has <laughs> brought, which will enable me to, if I can plug in a USB, shove that in and then plug that in the bike. And then I've got a mobile phone, which you're filming on. <laughs> you plug on here, because I'm about to run out of juice. Um, not sure why there isn't a USB port though. But you can make a USB port easy enough. Cool. And there's the, there is the one under the seat. Oh, there is one under the seat. That's a good point. So uh, if I grab the key, I can show you. So using the key, you pop open the seat. And then under here, you've got this little compartment. So the seat's wired in because they're heated. But you've got this little compartment here, which has got a USB in there. But I, th I think this is to take a phone. I'm not really... I'm not really sure. You could put a phone in there and close it, but I personally wouldn't run along with my coat, my phone in there. Have you got, yeah, let's test it. Does the phone fit? So, yeah, phone fits. So I guess you could put your phone on charge in there and then sit on it. Good for squirrels, because squirrels like hiding things. So Rocky Monster would enjoy that. Anyway, right, let's go explore the village. Because I don't see this at home, but isn't that incredible? Like what man is capable of making? morning just getting dressed for another day riding and now I'm gonna be really honest with you I have been and I'm starting to get turbo nervous about what I'm up to right now so the road trip down is you know a great way to road test the tiger and see how it handles but actually this is a destination mission I'm on my way to do thousand dunas which is a desert rally in Morocco it starts in Spain so the organizers um, you meet them there in Granada and then part of the rally following roadbook navigation so the paper scroll on your handlebars you then get a ferry over to Morocco and do six days in Morocco riding around sand, dunes, rocks, tracks, hard terrain and, and then head back again and I am doing it on a Triumph Tiger Rally Pro which is a very big bike. Now to put this into context Harley Davidson have a Dakar rider doing this rally on a Pan America. Triumph have a Dakar rider doing this rally on a Triumph Tiger Pro. And they have both put out massive press releases 
and news about the fact that they are doing this because it's 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 not normal. These are big bikes to be tackling these <laughs> these things on. And there's little me, um, who's going to be brave in the desert and I'm starting to feel really nervous whether I'm going to manage it and everything. Now obviously this whole rally is going to be fully documented. I'll video the whole lot so however it goes you will see it. So check out my other video on that. But yeah, I just thought to let you know I'm feeling a little bit nervous. The, the bikes aren't making me nervous. The bikes feel fantastic. So that's the important part. Um, it's the rider the rider that's going to be the weakest link. Ah, right, right, I better get to breakfast, because if I don't get riding, I won't make it to the start of the rally. Ooh. I have got my hair band. Look, you are blocking the box. Mountain. Whoop, whoop. That's where we're going. Today's going super lovely so far. We found this gorgeous mountain kind of road with twisty hairpins. This bike is beautiful on the road. You can lead it over. Even with the amount of luggage that I have on it, it feels super comfortable. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel underpowered. Pulls through the corners, it's got loads of torque. I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, Mav's just been for pee, haven't you Mav? Nope, all good. All good, all good in the head. I'm going to keep riding. Okay, we're all way into the road trip now and the power of a bike is quite a big talking point. You always get the people that maybe have a little something and they need a big powerful bike to make them feel really manly or really womanly. And this is a 900, so an 888. And so some people will be like, oh, I need my big 1250 say two letters bike to feel manly. I did some calculations, quick maths. No, I actually use the calculator. So I took some of the key rivals to this bike. So the T7, the Dev Desert X, the Africa Twin, the Pan America, the GS. So they're competitors direct and there's competitors above and below. Cause obviously a 1250 GS isn't trying to compete with an 850. That is a bigger, more powerful bike. And I took their weights and I took their horsepower and made a rough calculation, with precision using my calculator, on how much power you're actually getting per kilogram. And I found it really, really interesting because the reality is that a bigger bike doesn't necessarily mean more power. It does in some cases, but it also doesn't mean that a heavier bike means less power. Yes, it does mean there's gonna be more power, but more engine size, means more weight. More weight means that the power that that engine is putting out has a lot more mass to excel. And so, okay, if you're getting on a Pan America or a GS, yes, you have got more power to weight ratio. It's gonna feel certainly more lively as a result, but the gain in that bigger engine, jumping up from a 700, 800, 900, up to a 1250, isn't as big a jump in the power in your wrist as you might think. So riding around on this, so this is the 900, We've been doing motorways, we've been overtaking cars, we've been doing some mountain twisties, etc. And actually, I've never felt like I'm underpowered at all. I haven't been like ragging it on the stops where actually riding a T7, I have noticed I've got to the end of the power that's coming out of it. So that's something that I've quite liked about this 900. But what I'm really trying to say is that it's not all directly a game of how big is your engine. It's actually about the relationship to the other elements of the bike. So the 900 sits pretty comfortably in the midfield across the range of competitors for smaller, bigger bikes. And power to weight ratio is competitive. 
At no point, yeah, have I felt like I've needed power. It's pulled, it's lively, not as lively as a big, big bike, but it's not trying to be. And the advantage of it not being a big, big bike is it isn't a big, big bike. You've got less weight, confidence, off-roading. Everything is about compromise and working out what's going to be the best suited for the sort of riding you want to do. And I'm here just trying to give you a little bit of a perspective of real life being out there on these bikes. So uh, we're going to keep riding. Welcome to Revival Cafe. What a hangout. Just on the outskirts of Madrid. Yee -hee. We're making a little camp here. Uh, I love the fact that in Spain, whenever you get a drink, you always get some kind of nibble. 